What's your favourite Bond gadget? Oh, it's got to be the shoe knife. Because it's so fucking dumb. It's like, it's a shoe, but also knife. <laughs> fucking thanks, like, British government. The pinnacle of technology right there. You can kick someone and stab them at the same time. Amazing. Film buffs have long argued about who played the best James Bond, and that's an argument that's likely never going to end. However, I feel fairly confident saying that the toughest James Bond is the one played by Daniel Craig. A fact that makes it kind of amusing that Daniel Craig, in his capacity as James Bond, once cried at a song written about him. We've got to establish before we get onto the crying. Yes. We're not making fun of him for crying. No, and it actually takes a man who's supremely confident in his own masculinity to cry and admit to being emotional, especially when there are other lesser men out there who'd make fun of such a thing even happening. Um, I, as I say that, I'm expecting like, you know, the picture of Piers Morgan to just slide in to frame because like, I think him and Daniel Craig had like a mini beef. And it was one of those moments where I was like, you are never going to come out of this looking good. Because if people don't know what we're talking about, it was, uh, it was a picture of Daniel Craig, who recently had a, a young child, um, carrying his baby in a papoose around his chest. And Piers Morgan took offence to this for some reason. And it's like, oh, look at like James Bond, look at him. He's been the pussification of James Bond, carrying his child. And I, I don't understand what his argument was there. It's like, he's carrying, looking after the child you reared is not manly. Was he expecting to be pushed him around and like... I hey, think he was supposed to carry it by the ankle and just drag it along behind him like a fucking sack of potatoes like, or, or some shit. Or a shit like, um, like an Aston Martin. Yeah, like Piers Morgan strikes me as the kind of guy who wouldn't use like his wife's soap or some shit because like, it smells too nice. And that to me screams that you're way more insecure than James fucking Bond is. And that's what cracked me up the most, but it's like, Piers Morgan, the po-faced piece of human sausage, making fun of James fucking Bond. Describe him as a sausage, that reminds me of the fucking sausage roll. Oh, the vegan, the vegan sausage roll that alt Piers Morgan also got annoyed it's about. Like he, he like took, um, basically became the figurehead for the... The um, anti-sausage movement. Because they've got the same seasoning. Mmm, God. I like them. They've got nice crisp oh, pastry. Yeah. The way I saw it put is that the reason Piers Morgan was so annoyed about that is because a sausage roll is basically just ground up pork inside a flaky outer shell. And that essentially describes Piers Morgan. He's just defending his people, man. He can't it help. <laughs> it's my, my favourite one is, oh God, like, look at these, these liberals. They're, all, they're so easily offended. Vegan sausage roll! <laughs> so yeah, we're not making fun of Daniel Craig for crying. It's just amusing that he's best known for portraying James Bond, a character near universally portrayed as the quintessential Englishman. And that is cool, calm and collected under even the most dire and harrowing of circumstances. Even if said circumstances are someone swinging a thick piece of rope towards his nutsack at half the speed of sound. It's such an obscure way to hurt somebody, <laughs> isn't it? It's just like, uh, you walk into a room, it's like pliers and a, and a saw. It's like, oh, stuff's gonna go down. You walk into a room, you see a piece of rope and a chair with a bottom missing. I might, oh, I'm gonna die. I'd, I'd shoot, my, shoot myself in the face right now because whatever that guy's planning to do with that is the worst shit imaginable. It is strange to think of Bond crying. Yes. As like, he's always portrayed as like cool, calm and collected yeah, like, all the time. In the scene we just talked about, he laughs when his nutsack is getting just like destroyed by Mads Mikkelsen and says like, the last thing you're gonna do is scratch in my nutsack. And in the topic of today's conversation, the film Skyfall, um, I, he jumps onto the back of a exploding train and his first instinct is to adjust his cuffs. That is a Ginyu Force-esque level of commitment to styling on a motherfucker that I just respect. The only one who comes close has got to be Gus Fring. Oh yeah, like half my face has been blown off with just my tie. That is a weirdly specific trope, but do you have any other examples that I spring to mind for you? I, I, can, I can sort of visualise, like, it's, it's the going out in style yeah. idea. Well, it's um, uh, Inglourious Bastards. Yeah. You've got bloody, um, I forget the actor's name now. Magneto, young Magneto. Oh, um, Fastbender. Fastbender, yeah, Aspender, there it is. Did you ever see that? <laughs> no. There was like a, um, a magazine interview with Michael Fastbender, but the F was in the middle of the page, it just comes up Michael Aspender. 
which always amused me. But anyway, like, yeah, when he's like, oh, if I'm going to die, I'm going to go out speaking the Queen's and just like take the sip of scotch. Well, if this is it, old boy, I hope you don't mind if I go out speaking the Kings. Before Hugo Stiglitz just obliterates the Nazi ball sack. Stiglitz, see how Peter's into your Nazi boss. Or the, or the one from Titanic, which is based on a real fucking story of the guy who, when he finds out the ship is sinking, goes back to his room and gets dressed up, orders a brandy, and sits on the deck of the boat, just sipping it, knowing he's going to die. We have dressed in our best and are prepared to go down as gentlemen. But we would like a brandy. He's like, no, no, I'm old. I've, I've lived a good life. Give my place in the lifeboat to some fucker else. I'm just going to sit looking like a pimp-ass boss, supping the finest brandy man has produced. And just watching the world, well, the world as I know it, burn to the ground. So yeah, it's a, it's a weirdly specific joke. It's like, I'm going to go, if I'm going down, I'm going down like a boss. Or Terminator 2, the Terminator, when it's melting itself in fucking molten steel, gives a big goofy thumbs up at the end. <laughs> Lots of people hated that, apparently. No, people love that. What people hated is um, all of the references to it. It's um, Ready Player One. Yeah. It's like where the Iron Giant does it. It's like, that doesn't make any fucking sense. Also, fuck you for making the Iron Giant. I am not a gun. <laughs> Everyone's dead. I am not a gun. So you said that today we're talking about Skyfall. Yes. Why specifically has Skyfall got to do with a crying Daniel Craig? Because, as is tradition with James Bond films, um, Skyfall the film features a song by a well-known voice of the era. In this case, fucking Adele, innit? Because I'm going to mention this, because I'm going to guess a lot of Americans watching don't realise that Adele is common as fuck. Because like, you hear her sing and it's like, her voice, it cannot be touched. It's fucking phenomenal. Then you hear her talk, it's like, I fucking Adele, innit? Her ex-boyfriend tried to sue her, saying, oh yeah, because our relationship was so shit, it inspired her to write that album that went like mega platinum, so therefore I deserve some of the royalties. So he's basically saying, I was such a bad boyfriend, I caused her to like pour her soul out onto his album, I want my fucking money. Because that's the way it works, Taylor Swift would have no money at all. Yeah, right? everyone else would get it. Well, that's the joke, isn't it? It's like, oh, I waved, um, Taylor Swift waved at me, I didn't wave back, expect to see an album next week. <laughs> Moving on though, like Adele co-wrote a song for Skyfall, aptly titled Skyfall, and by all accounts, fucking crushed it, and by some accounts, the song itself was actually better than the film, because Skyfall wasn't received that well. And uh, what happened was, after the song had been mastered, a early demo tape was previewed for Daniel Craig, James Bond, and the producer for the film, and I'm not making this up, Barbara Broccoli, a name I want to just take a, a few moments to appreciate. It's Barbara Broccoli. Do you reckon she's friends with Jasper Carrot? Oh man, that could do that. that. That could be like pin and cushion, man. Pin and cushion, fish and chip. Chip and pin, <laughs> fish and cushion. What is, what's the joke on that? I think it's... Is it's, it, it's chip and pin? It's chip, no. It's we should chip, explain this to Americans. Yeah, like, yeah. A big a tradition in the United Kingdom is double axe. Um, cannon and ball, ant and deck. And usually the names have some sort of link between them. And there was a Mitchell and Webb sketch. Again, yeah. two comedians who were saying Mitchell and Webb. The original one, it was, uh, there was a double act called Fish and Chips. Yeah. And a double act called Pin and Cushion. Yes. And they were, basically, two of those members wanted to break off and form Chip and Pin, because it was becoming the new thing. Pin and Chip. <laughs> chip and Pin. Well, what the hell is that? That's not a thing. It is. But then suddenly, Fish and Cushion became... <laughs> fish and Cushion! And Chip and Pin weren't popular in any way. It just doesn't make any sense to me. And of course he was right. I mean, Fish and Cushion. What does that mean? How many double acts are... There's still... It's still a thing today. We've got like Ant and Deck. Yeah. Uh, Mitchell and Webb. Fry and, Fry and Laurie. Fry and Laurie, yeah. French and Saunders. Yeah. There's so many. Do you think we can do Rawlinson and Smallwood? Don't work, does it? It's too long. Yeah, the last names are too long. It'd have, it'd have to be like Rawlinson and Wood. Smalls and Rolls. That could work. We could do it. Smalls and Rolls. Smalls and Rolls. Smalls and Rolls. There we go. Look, for look forward to that never. That terrible. Just me and you on stage just being shit. No, this is basically a double act, I'd say. Yeah. Smalls and Rolls. Make it work. Do you reckon if we ever did this as a stage performance, I'd just have to stand at the back in the shadow and shout to Donna Michael? What thought about that? Um, we can talk about it after we finish like, you know, the, the video off. Yeah. Because, um, as you probably surmised from the title of this video and what we talked about today, um, the song made Daniel Craig cry the biggest, saltiest man tears I've ever been shed. 
and he, in his capacity as James Bond, gave the song his blessing. Not that fucking mattered, because as if the company weren't going to release an Adele song, and the song went like mega platinum and sold millions of fucking copies. But I just find it kind of amusing that the man who plays James Bond, the personification of English non-fuck giving, cried at a song about him. So do you think this could ever work as a live show? Because we do get asked, like, are you ever going to go to, like, conventions and shit? I reckon it would, because, like, it's not scripted. No. So, provided that we had a jumping off point, like, it's the same thing you do with the podcasts. Now. Yes. They're just... I don't reckon, though, we'd ever be able to do it, because I don't think the crowd will play along enough. It, this interaction will rely on no one else just shouting in penis, which is going to happen, because that's <laughs> what... Because that's our audience. Yeah, that's... that is, yeah. Sorry, guys, that's, it's what would happen. I mean, it used to, used to stand up, so I guess you could deal with hecklers in your own. Yeah, way. that'd be the just idea. Just tell them to fuck off and block them. Yeah. <laughs> Get the security, just remove them. No, just put a bag on the head that says blocked on the front. <laughs> but yeah, it's a weird thing because this doesn't really translate well to being on stage. I guess we could, like, I could just prepare a few in advance and do like a half an hour thing of like, here's three unreleased videos we're talking about. But then, obviously, without the bouncing off of another person, you have to be heckling from the crowd to rely on. And you can't rely on people in the crowd to ask the questions that we need to ask to move the article along or the video along in the way that it's supposed to go. Because pull back that curtain a little bit, there's, there's, some, there's some planning that goes into these. Not much, but a little bit. <laughs> the planning, Googling the, the article. Yeah. The fact that you have to Google your own website to get to it to find the I've article. I've not even bookmarked my own fucking website, man. It's crazy. <laughs> So little plan, but yeah, I don't think it would work. And it's weird because we, I get asked quite a bit, like, are you going to go to a convention? I could, but what would I even do? We don't have any physical merch that I can sell. There's no thing we can do as a show, so there's no reason to like give us a table or a spot. Because all it would be is me just stood there going, has anyone got any questions? Like, what's the favourite video you've recorded? And I'd just like put my head in my hands and go... You just have to have it as like literally this. Like you'd we'd, we'd you'd look into some particular facts beforehand, um, like three articles or something, and me and you would just stand there and we would just I'd memorize the article as well so I can ask like. But questions. I don't think the audience would like that because it'd just be shouting out. It'd be like it'd be like a pantomime. You just put me in the audience. I'll be a plan. So like <laughs> they apparently already have. <laughs> it it would be like a pantomime, but there'd be a whole lot more sh like penis words getting shouted out. I can see it now. That's so, what it could just be, though. People could pay money to sit in the audience. You would sit there in a chair, not saying anything. They'd shout penis at you for an hour. They'd write there and you just say cheers for the money. Yeah. Just walk off stage. That might work, yeah. yeah. You know what? I like that idea. Let's do that. <laughs>